Hello, my name is Jamie, um, otherwise known as Just Jamie, and I'm going to show you a little bit on how to use masks in Photoshop. Now, I'm using Photoshop CS6, but this will certainly um, be useful in CS5 and earlier. Um, now, Photoshop Elements is a little different. I'm not absolutely familiar with Photoshop Elements at this time, so this tutorial really is aimed for um, Photoshop users. Um, so, uh, what is a mask? Well, there's a couple of different types of masks when you're talking about Photoshop. There's the clipping mask that many of us are familiar with, and there's also layer masks, and I'm going to show you a bit of both today. Um, I'm also using products for this example today from uh, a couple of designers, including myself, and all the credits are below here if you want to check them out. Okay, first I'm going to show you how to do a clipping a clipping mask and there's many different ways to do that. Um, as you see here in this template from um, Dawn by Design, she has a, an area here for the photo. So I'm actually going to control and click the little layer to have it selected. And I have my layer, my, my um, basic photo mask here. I'm going to copy it and I'm going to paste and it actually pastes in place when you control click the layer. Just a little tip there and I'm going to toggle the the original layer off. So I have my photo mask here ready to go and I'm going to grab my photo which here is my daughter Sydney and I'm going to paste it right there. Now let's create a photo or clipping mask I should say. There are many different ways to do this. You could right click the layer that you want to clip, create clipping mask. That's simple. You can go layer or sorry, yep, yeah, layer create clipping mask. You can go alt control G. I would never remember that. And I will show you what I do. I hold my alt key down. Do you see how the little um, hand here turned into a little box with an arrow? And I click. It's a very quick, simple way and it's for some reason easy for me to remember. And now you can basically resize, reposition however you'd like it to. And I think I like mine there. And I go like this and I apply it. And there, that is a clipping mask. Very simple. You can clip it to brushes, texts, anything that has shape pretty much, you can make a clipping mask too. And as you'll see, the actual photo mask here is has a bit of texture and um, brushwork to make it look like it's somewhat combined with the background. And that's the point of that. Now, a layer mask is a little different. Um, these are really fun to play with, especially if you um, like to distress things like text or photos, add texture, add a, add a little heart shape or whatever. Um, I'm going to show you how to do that and how to um, save it for future use. Okay, so let's take this for example for the moment. Um, we have my photo mask here, this layer. And if I go down here, the little box with the circle in it, it's, it'll say add layer mask when you hover over it. Click it once. So I get that out of the way so it doesn't confuse us. And you'll see a white box appear. Okay? And we have to make sure we have it selected when we do any kind of masking to the layer. Okay? And the rule is um, black subtracts and white adds. Okay? And um, you would generally use a, a brush, your brush tool for this. Um, there are exceptions, but I'll show you in a little bit. So just for just for demonstration's sake here, I'm going to go up 100%, and I'm actually going to take off the clipping mask so we can see a little better here. So here's here's the black, and I have the clipping mask on it, and my foreground here is black, which means it will subtract from the layer. So let me show you here. 
I have a circle brush right now and I have it at 100% black as my foreground and I'm going to click it and see it takes away. If I change it to a little darker gray, you'll see it's starting to hit the opacity here. See it's not all the way, uh, it's not taken all the way through. And likewise I'm going to lighten up the gray and show you here. And then with white, it won't do anything. Do you see that? But if I take it over here, it'll start adding back into the mask. Okay? And if I want to quickly reset everything I did. I'm going to hit my D key to set the default and to fill the whole entire mask layer with um, white. You would go Alt Backspace to fill with the foreground or Control Backspace to fill with the with the background. So my foreground is selected so you want to go Alt Backspace and there we go it's gone. So, I want to add a little texture to this, so I'm going to take one of my brushes here. Let's take this one. This is rather subtle. And I'm going to click X. Do you see there? When I click X, 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 it just toggles my foreground and background. And right now, since it's the mask is by default all white, I want to take away from it. I'm going to use my black. And I have my brush here. Bang and there we have some texture. Now I'm just going to go like this. Oh, I don't like that. That's okay. Hit your X again. So the white is the foreground and go back over it and it just adds it back. You can do some really cool things if you're a designer and you want to distress your own overlays. This is the key um, because you don't have to worry about erasing and just control Z, Z, Z or whatever. You can just basically go to town with your brushes, keep hitting your X back and forth and add and subtract and add and subtract. Um, so if we put the picture back in there, you'll start to see the texture in there. It's a little too uh, crazy for me. So just uh, add a little back there. You can also do this um, with shapes. So all the way up here, I'm gonna can I'm gonna add a shape to this, say a little star right here, just just to demonstrate what we can do with masks. Oh, that's great, right? There's a star, but I'm actually going to toggle the visibility off, and I'm going to hover over the thumbnail. I'm gonna hold the control key down, and I'm going to select it. Do you see the little marching ants there? Now this is fun. Watch this. I'm going to take the photo off so we don't see it. Here we go. It's selected. I'm going to select the layer mask. Hit my X for the um, so the foreground is black. Hit my B key <laughs> to uh, activate my brush. I'm going to select a brush and see that? And if it's too much for you, hit your X and add a little more back. And Control D will get those little marching ants away. Do you see what happened there? So you had a shape, and when you have it selected, then that's the only part that's going to be affected in the mask. Um, same with text here, okay? Um, let's just do a quick example. By the way, you don't have to use my photo mask here for this. This is I was just demonstrating how to clip to a photo mask there. Um, uh, for example, I'm just going to go ahead and we're going to create a new document so I can show you how to mask um, use a layer mask on text. Okay, um, I'm just going to go. Yeah, that's fine. And I'm going to say hello. And I can't see anything. <laughs> Let's change this to black. And let's have a nice big fat font if I can find one. There we go. That's a big one. Let's get in a little bit closer. Go away. Okay. So I'm going to hit that little add layer mask down here. And there's our little window. I'm going to hit X to make sure the black is selected because it's going to subtract from our text here. Hit my brush and I'm going to choose another texture. 
if I find one here. That's fine by me. And then I'm going to start going. There we go. There's one. Uh, I just did it once here. As if it's too much, let's go back to the whitest foreground and let's add it back. See, that would be a way to distress text. And I guess the key is, is having the right brushes, right? Um, let's find another brush set of mine to show you a different kind of effect. Do -do -do. How about some newspaper brushes? I'm going to create a new shape here just for demonstration purposes. We don't have to rasterize it, but I like to for now. And I'm going to mask it, hit my B for brush, hit my X to make sure that black is the foreground, and I'm going to. There we go. I just distressed it with this. You see that? It's pretty cool. It really is. Um, so that's pretty much what I want to show you, except for one more thing. If you find yourself um, messing around with the masking and you're like, hey, I want this for another time, well then all you have to do is right click the layer and you want to convert it to a smart object. And then I rasterize it. And then I con control A, control C, or edit, copy, and I create, oh, I create the new document. Oops, did I not, did I not do that right? There, that's better. And make sure you turn the background off um, so it's transparent. And then you would simply just save it to your desktop or wherever you want to save it and save it as a PNG. Um, that's important. I can't seem to move my window right now. Um, but save your document as a PNG so it maintains its transparency. Um, you could also, if you'd like, um, save it as a brush. You go edit, define brush preset, name your brush if you like, and if you want to save that brush set for later, say you have a whole bunch of them in there, you would click up here and this little arrow go to preset manager you would go and select the brushes you wanted to save and make sure you have it highlighted save set and that then you can save the ABR file for a later time and then you could just come back and I'll show you here brush I already have it my presets there's my layer there's my new um, mask. Okay? And then you can go back and not only can you clip photos, you can clip anything to it. So uh, clip a paper and they're pretty cool looking. And yeah. So I think that's it and I hope you were able to learn something. Thanks for watching.